Good morning, everyone. I was planning on doing part two of Sophia, which is our alternate translation of Second Thessalonians chapter two. I still hope to get to it. The book is almost done. Uh, but I would like to, uh, to chat with you all for a while. A few things I want to talk to you about, including the politics of what's going on in the, in the world right now. Uh, but also, somebody had a dream. I always like to hear your dreams. So, Mary, can you hear your dream? Yes. A uh, very quick dream. It was, uh, I believe I was in Susan's house, although there was nothing around that would indicate that. Susan was there, her son Joshua, and myself. Joshua said, uh, I'm going out of the country on a trip, and I need $10,000. And I said to Joshua, I think I have some money. So I took out a wad, a big wad of money, and evidently it was very small bills. And I said, I don't know if I have enough. So we started counting it out, and it took a long, long time. And I counted out 1,000, 2,000. I said, Josh, we made it, 9000 I even, wow, I even have $1,000 left over. And I woke up. And it was Joshua that was it going out of town. It was Joshua, not Jace. That was going out of town. Yes. Well, that, that, that's positive. I mean, it's definitely a positive dream. Uh, my, our, first, our first inclination should be to give it a spiritual interpretation. Okay? So, uh, Susan is a a woman of God, Joshua is her son, it could be Christ in Susan, it could be Christ, Joshua is Jesus. Okay. Going on a trip and he needs money, it, it could mean, it, it's, it's definitely positive, I would say, that God is moving, but I have, I mean, I won't know unless he tells us more, do you understand? For, first of all, it could mean more financing coming into the ministry, although the financing was for a trip, you said. Well, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know anything about a trip other than a little trip, a side trip to Tennessee. Well, let me just pray a prayer, Father. If there's, if you would like to have us the interpret, for us to have the interpretation of the dream while, or during this meeting, please let us have it. You know, otherwise we'll just go on, unless somebody else has a perception. Joshua is Jesus and somebody funding Jesus. It sounds like the funding of the ministry to me. Why, it took, why it's a trip, I don't know. But the trip could indicate the sending forth of the message. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, does, anybody, does anybody have anything to say about the dream? Anybody? Just the... the, the this thing about Joshua going into the land, you know, into the promised land with Caleb. Ah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, she could, Joshua crossed over. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, when I woke up, I was very surprised that it wasn't Jace because he's the one that goes overseas. You know, not Josh. Although Josh is going to the surface. So. But Josh, we want the name. The Lord wants the name. Joshua. Yes. Yes, that's right. So you're right. Joshua led the people into the into the promised land. Hmm. The funding to go into the prom not necessarily financial funding, but spiritual funding to go into the promised land. Actually, that's a very exciting message. Well, that's what we're waiting for, right? We're waiting to go over. We have to cross over Jordan to go into land. Now, remember, everybody, the, the warfare, the real warfare started after they crossed the Jordan. So any warfare that we've seen so far is nothing. Okay? So... Uh, and remember, there were those that didn't want to go, that didn't want to cross over because they didn't want the warfare. So whoever doesn't want the warfare, um, you're not, you cannot enter in without warfare. So that's interesting. This is interesting because that leads me into one of the issues that I wanted to talk to you all about. <sighs> now I'm never meaning to pick on anybody, but I'm concerned about you. You know, when I bring up things like this, it's because I'm concerned about you. So I had an email from somebody the other day comparing our ministry to a, a, and I've written to them about it so you know who you are. I just need to share this with the other brethren. Uh, uh, comparing this ministry to a New Age ministry saying, you know, they're teaching like the same thing that we're teaching. So uh, this very valuable member of our ministry thought that we have something in common. and. Uh, 
Uh, so let me ask you all, uh, what, what, in what way do we differ? I mean, we preach esoteric doctrine, we preach spiritual doctrine. In what way do, do what I teach here, how does that differ from all the other New Age doctrines? Anything else that you can find out there? What is the one characteristic combined with esoteric doctrine that I preach that I know, don't, I don't know of any other ministry that combines the two? What's the main thrust of the ministry here? The Christ before us. Bring forth man, drop it down. Dealing with your sin nature? Dealing with our sin nature. Listen, mm -hmm. brethren, there's such mind control going on. There is such mind control. We are subject to such mind control that I, don't, I get frustrated because I don't know how to get through to you all. When I hear something like that, when I hear somebody thinking that we have something in common with another ministry that has never mentioned sin in probably a hundred years, it just, um, I don't know what more to do than to preach to you, but we're all subject to this incredible, incredible mind control. And not just with regard to what I'm teaching here, but of course the board, we're finding out now that uh, that we've been so mind controlled to believe whatever the, the scientists say is true. They can say anything they want and they find someone to announce it over the TV and everybody believes what the scientists say. And the scientists are all in the pocket of Obama with this, with this new, in the pocket of the New World Order, uh, trying to control the people and mass mind control the people and we just believe whatever they tell us. It's time to break the programming on our mind. And I, I can't even tell you which is more important than the other. But you need to know that everything that God's doing here, if you're not dealing with your sins, it's, it's worthless. Worthless. The whole night you could be an expert in the doctrine of Christ. If you are not dealing with your sins and you don't know that that of the willingness of the other person. Because brethren, you need to evaluate everyone that comes into your life. And if you don't know that, that the primary criteria is not the, not, not the doctrine, the primary criteria of who, it, who the Lord may want you to be fellowshipping with is their attitude towards sin. So this is the way it goes. People, especially believers, uh, especially believers like us, are, we, are, we are attracted to esoteric doctrine. We're attracted to esoteric doctrine like a, like a moth is attracted to a flame. I am. I am. I'm attracted to esoteric doctrine. I just hear two people having a conversation on esoteric doctrine, and I, I'm wondering if I could possibly, if God will make a way for me to engage in that conversation. But you need to know that it's deadly for you to be associating with people who engage in esoteric doctrine but do not deal with sin. It is deadly for you. Am I telling you not to fellowship with them? No, I'm not telling you that at all. What I'm saying is to fellowship with them, not knowing that they're, that they're deadly to you, is deadly for you. Do you know what I just said? Do you know what I just said? So you will scare me. And, and it's, it's not a rebuke. I get upset because I'm preaching my heart out. And I see things that indicate to me that one or who knows how many of the rest of you are, are not as prepared as I would like you to be. So I get upset like a mother hen. I get, I'm not mad at you, but I get upset like a mother hen. It really upsets me. You know? So let me just clarify this and I want to move on. That your life is in danger. See, now Mary just had a very interesting dream which is just another witness that the Lord is preparing us to cross over to the other side. All the indications are, all the preaching is about preparing us to cross over Jordan, which is the river of death. And you all need to know that the closer we get, the more Satan is trying to take you out. Maybe to kill you, maybe not to kill you physically, but certainly to kill you spiritually, so that you don't cross over. Why? Because when you cross, why? What happens when we cross over? What happens when we cross over? Why? Why is Satan trying to take us out? 
where all the trauma is made up. And, and what about that? So we'll, we'll live forever. So who cares if there's one person who lives forever? Why, why does Satan want to take us out before we cross over? What's going to happen when we cross over? I just told you a minute ago. Who's the death? What's going, to, what's going to happen on the other side? What's life going to be like on the other okay. side? Okay. Um, I just told you. I just told you. <laughs> it's going to be war on the other yes, side. Yes, yes, yeah, and it's going to be a war. And who's going to be winning the war? Christ. Christ Jesus. is about to take out these other powers. Amen. Crossing over, although, look, brother, we're all, all of us are narcissistic. Right. Everybody, everybody born of a woman is narcissistic to some degree. What does that mean? Concerned about ourselves. Of course. You know, we don't want to die. If you're getting on in years, you don't want to die. I don't want to be sick. <laughs> we want to have the, we want, we want our needs met. You know, we want our needs met in this world. Brethren, we, we, we are dependent. You may not feel dependent. Because you're taking for granted what God has given you, or you're believing that you have a roof over your head, and food in your mouth, and clothes on your back, and your children are safe, with, uh, with equipped to, to acquire jobs that will support them, uh, because you think on some level it's because you, you got educated, and you got a job, and, and, and you went to work, and, but all of that is a lie. That all of that is a lie. The only reason you have a roof over your head and clothes on your back and food in your mouth is because God gives it to you. And everything that's given to you, you can lose. So there's an illusion. There's an illusion that you can earn money, but it's just an illusion. Everything we get is from God. We are dependent. We are always dependent as a newborn infant. And that's the truth. We are, as in, we are as dependent as a newborn infant. Everything we have is given to us. Don't get caught up in the illusion that you work for it. Because the opportunity to work is given to you. It's all a lie. We are, we, we are as independent as new, as dependent as newborn babies. When we cross over to the other side, okay, Christ Jesus will be standing up in us. And that means hope that we're going to be one. We're not going to be going one way in the Lord the other way. We're going to be one, so we're going to be engaged in all of his battles. See, even on this side, depending on how spiritual you are, you're engaged in all of his battles on this side. And, and we keep getting beat up, those of us that are engaged in the battles of Jesus Christ on this side. We get beat up all the time, depending on our own weaknesses and curses and blessings. We get beat up in different ways. I get beat up in my body. You can get beat up in your mind. You can get beat up through your children being hurt. You, 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 any, any irritation that, is, that will bring you out of Christ is, is, a, is, a, is a battle wound. See? So Satan moves to take away our provision because we're all narcissistic. We have to be. We're dependent as newborn babies. So you can be all involved in the spiritual warfare, and if something happens and your food is cut off, you're going to be looking for food. Or if the, the, the roof flows off your house, you're going to be, your primary prayer is going to be, Lord, how can I serve you without a place to live, without heat, without air, without water, without food? <laughs> So we're crossing over Jordan, but we are crossing over to become a man. That means no more dependence. That means that we will have power over nature and to force it to provide what we need. That's the one side. And to help others, that's the one side. We saw Jesus provide for 5,000, etc., etc. But there's going to be war. So Satan wants to stop us before we cross over. So you need to find the balance between being paranoid. I don't want to make you paranoid, but I, I need you to know who you are. And uh, brethren, there's a big 
there's a big hole in the middle of the street and you're walking down the street. I have to tell you, there's a big hole in the middle of the street. So, you need to put everyone in your life before God. And I'm not telling you that you have to give up relationships. All I'm telling you is to break the, the programming on your mind. And don't be a victim. You need to know that the bottom line is sin. Whoever you talk to that's into, into that says they're a Christian, but it, so they say they're a, maybe they believe they're a Christian. They didn't. What is a Christian? What is a Christian? What is a Christian? Brethren, the church is going under judgment. I was working on this book last night, and I was just putting scripture references, and I was in the book of Revelation, and I came across the scripture, I think it's in, in the back of Revelation, where it says, and, and there will no more be, the, no more bride, no more bridegroom, you know, no more sound of mirth in the streets. And I have read that scripture so many times, but last night I looked at it and I said, I realized that over the years, I questioned what bride and bridegroom, I don't know what the you know, story is. And I looked at it last night and I said, that is the church. That is the church. No more bride and no more bridegroom. First of all, the, the church is not the bride. Christ in us is the bride and the Lord Jesus is the groom. Christ in us marries us so that we're attached to him so that when Christ marries the Lord Jesus, we go with him. But the bride is Christ, and hopefully with us attached to him. And the bridegroom is the Lord Jesus. No more bride and no more bridegroom? No more bride and no more bridegroom. This is judgment on the church. So the fact that you're fellowshipping with someone who calls themselves a Christian, or who thinks they are a Christian, or who may very well be a Christian, what is a Christian? Do you want to be attached to them without understanding when the judgment falls? I have to tell you that I really don't, and I've been telling you this all along, I am not satisfied with the grasp that I have of the understanding as to how this judgment is going to fall. This is what I know. It's no longer national judgment. It's not national judgment like it was on, on Israel. Okay? It's one at a time. It's one man at a time. We live or we die, we stand or we fall, one man at a time. You will not, if God forbid I should fall, that doesn't mean you have to fall. If you fall, that doesn't mean I have to fall. May none of us fall. I'm your teacher, I'm the mouthpiece that God gets information to you with. You need to respect me because of my office, just like I've been teaching about the men in your house and your husband. You, you don't evaluate the job I do. All you need to know is whether or not God put you here, and then you honor the office that I have. And hopefully you're praying for me that I should do the very best job that's, that is even beyond what I'm capable of. See? So, no more bride, no more bridegroom. The judgment is on the church. When you have a soul time with somebody, and you are not aware of who they are, and the bomb falls, you're going to be standing right there. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to break the relationship. I'm telling you to know that there's something wrong, something wrong in their relationship with God, because I don't know how to define a Christian. Barack Obama says he's a Christian. I don't know how to define a Christian. Okay. Well, if you have Christ, that makes you a Christian. So you have Christ, but has your personality been changed? Have you been truly converted in your soul? Degrees, 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 degrees. We, uh, Lord, give me the words. Please give me the words. The Christians are going under judgment. The fornicate is that horror, the horror of the book of Revelation. Brethren, it is not even America. It is the church. It is the church who is sleeping with Satan and the devil rather than with Jesus. 
one man at a time. But so many will be going under judgment that it will look like it's a national judgment, but it's not a national judgment. One man at a time. Who are you in bed with? Who are you in bed with? All you Christians, who are you in bed with? What is the primary thrust of your mind? Is it evangelism of the person that never heard you? And that's not a bad thing. I'm saying what is the primary thrust of your, of your relationship with God? Is it to have your sins revealed? Are you praying that God should change you? That he should help you to overcome the wickedness in our souls? And then with whatever energy is left over, may he send you to others to help? Or do you think you're okay and you're going to be wake up one morning and everything's going to be fine and you're going to have a spiritual body and the whole thrust of your move is to teach others. Well, that's Antichrist. And, and Jesus is not coming to punish you because you've chosen Antichrist. He's coming to punish your sin nature which has deceived you. He's coming to punish the serpent in your mind and you're, you're there when the, when the judgment falls. The church, the church is the, is the part, is the woman that's been deceived. And this gets very confusing because I've been teaching you that the evil one is the Malchus. See? There's an aspect of her that was naive, that was seduced. The, the serpent, just to, I, I don't want, I don't want to get into esoteric doctrine this morning, but you just need to know what I'm talking about. This is a practical message. You all have an alter ego. We all have an evil side. If you don't hear the voice of your evil side, you're in trouble. The example is Job's wife saying, curse God and die. Everybody has it. If you don't think you have it, you're deceived, and you're dead already. You have to see that other part of yourself so that you can guard against it and restrain it and put it in jail and kill it. I say, you cannot live through me. Brethren, brethren, we not only are as as dependent as newborn babies. We have no existence of our own. We are the spiritual consciousness that expresses itself through us. That's who we are. Is it Christ expressing himself through you? Or is it the devil? Oh, the devil. Who is the devil? I've been preaching this for more than 20 years. The devil? is the personality, which is the, now there are five grades of soul, right? The lowest grade of soul is nephesh, it's in your blood, and it's the life of this body. It's your personality, see? The personality that goes with the body. And there's a higher grade of soul, okay, which is either Christ in you or Sophia, as we're learning. Okay. So we are nephesh, the personality, the consciousness that goes with the body. If you don't have a higher soul, then you're just living, and again, if that's who you are, there's nothing wrong with it. You just need to know who you are. You're just living off of the land. You just live for the, for the flesh. You live to eat, to, to have children, to have sex, and if, and if you're happy with that, praise the Lord. But most people in the Western world today, I don't know, I'm talking about the Western world. I'm talking, look, if you don't live in the Western world, but... You're in my meeting and you're a Christian, I'm talking about you too. By and large, it's the way the Western world's being targeted. Because this is what this is where everything is set up for Christ to come forth. See? So who's living through you? Who's living through you? Now we we have both. If you have Christ, you have both. If Christ is formed in you. And you're not in a warfare, it's not Christ living through you. Because you're full in nature, you want to call it the devil, whatever you want to call it, you're full in nature, the side of you that's, that's your alter ego. Is it your alter ego or is that the real you? Maybe the real you is the, is the devil and Christ is your alter ego. Meaning the devil is your primary you. See? The bottom line is we're all double. That's what James said, a double-minded man. We're all double. If you're single, it's the devil. There's no such thing as being single in Christ at this time. 
So we're just skins. We're walking, talking, thinking, breathing skins. Everything that which determines what we are is the higher intelligence that lives through us. So many are being deceived today. So many are being deceived today that I, I sometimes I sit back and I say, Lord, I, I must be getting it wrong somewhere because who's going to be left? But I read somewhere that there's a prophet that said the same thing. I read in my Bible that there's a prophet that said the same thing. Lord, who could survive this? Nobody will be left. I read that in my Bible. So you need to know who you are. And this is, this is for everybody. You need to know who you are. You need to be policemen on duty all the time. Everyone, your loved ones, people in your family, your husband, your wife, your children, and people that you meet that you're drawn to because we're attracted to esoteric doctrine. You need to know who they are. So that if God forbid your your God forbid, brethren, the day comes that you see the judgment falling on this other person, you need to separate yourself from them. Now maybe not necessarily physically, you need to ask God what He wants you to do. But if if you don't know who they are, and you're in full agreement with them because they preach a doctrine that sounds like a doctrine that I preach here, you're going to be sitting right in their living room, when, spiritually speaking when the bomb falls. See? And the end time mind control is just alarming. I'm talking about myself. End time mind control is alarming. When I see it working on me, it's alarming. And it works on me. It's been working on me for years. My toughest area is when people that I know hurt me. This, this last big warfare that was going on, I, I'm going to give you this testimony. You, know, you need to hear this. I knew I, my arm, couldn't move my arm, was down with a digestive disorder for I think six weeks, four to six weeks. So severe that I couldn't eat that I told the Lord if I wasn't healed by a certain date, I was going to a doctor, I would have died. I couldn't eat. Okay? It was severe, severe attack on me. I knew where it came from. And one of the brethren had a dream and called me and we broke the curses and a powerful prayer came forth in my early days of Minnesota. I think the first or second day that I was in Minnesota. And the next day, I was like 90, 100% better. Okay, my arm is fully healed. I'm still struggling a little with this digest. I still need digestive aids here and there, but I'm living a normal life. You know, I'm hoping for a full healing. So anyway, two weeks later when it came time for me to leave Minnesota, I completely forgot that that, red sister, that sister had called, that had broken the curse, that that incredibly powerful prayer that came forth wiped out of my mind. I left Minnesota saying, well, I guess I was, I'm really feeling okay. I guess I was healed in Minnesota. Wiped, completely wiped out of my mind. So I happened to speak to that person on the phone, and they, they talked to me as if they knew what I was talking about, as, as if I knew what they were talking about. And then I instantly remembered. I left Minnesota saying I was healed in Minnesota, but I don't know why. Wiped. So, so um, all I can do is keep telling you. I'm certainly not mad at you. I'm just trying to convey my urgency to you so that you will keep it in mind. Then I think about writing these things down. Who has time to write all these things down? I don't know, maybe I should start writing them down. <sighs> so, um, we need to make them break the mind control on our, ourselves. And it's not just the example that I gave you can really be a matter of life, life and death. You know? And for, for years and years and years, people would be really doing me great harm with their mind, whether they consciously knew it or not. And I just, you know, I, I believed it. it was, initially, I couldn't believe it, you know, that people's minds could be doing this to me. But now I believe that a mind, definitely a mind, a mind can make you sick. I was just talking to Susan about it. 
So uh, they don't. But then the person doesn't have to doesn't have to really wish you harm. But there's negative feelings, you know, that they're repressing. Or I don't want to get into that whole thing yet. People do not have to consciously wish you harm. That that was what was so hard for me. I would be looking at the person's face, and I knew that they would never deliberately try to hurt me. Yet I knew that their mind was was seriously hurting me. And that took me a very long time. Now I believe that. And I thank God for the wood because I don't, I can forgive the person because I really understand that they could be going on without their knowing about it. But it gets wiped from my mind. Although I'm doing better than I used to do, it's getting wiped from my mind. So, in order to, to get to the point where we're going to break this kind of programming, we have to at least first or coincidentally at the same time break the programming that's on our mind in the world. And this flat earth uh, theory that I've introduced to you is a major, major breakthrough with regard to the programming. And one of the, I've spoken to you, I think, once or twice on this flat earth. One, one thing that I forgot to tell you that I was reminded of last night. The logo for the United Nations, if you look at the logo for the United Nations, it's a map. In, in like a wreath, and the map is a flat map. If you look at the map of the logo of the UN, it's the, it's the map of the flat earth. It's not, it's not a global map, because the, when you look at the flat map of the earth, the continents change in their relationship to each other. It's the flat earth. Okay. So a good, a good place to start is, is with what's going on in the world. And one of the things I had to confess just a, a month ago, that I would believe anything that I would hear on the news, that I was told that the scientists said. I would believe that they have all of this, these telescopes and these, these instruments, and that it was true. I believed anything they told me with regard to outer space or planets or what I was taught in school. You've got to break the programming on your mind. You've got to become a free thinker. A free thinker, no matter what anybody tells you, you need to examine it, put it before God and think for yourself. See? Now, the latest thing that, that happened, well now I'm, my, the programming's broken on me in this area. I don't believe anything that comes down from these scientists. Why? Uh, I mean, I'll put it before God, but I don't believe anything that they say. Why don't you believe anything that the scientists say, Sheila? Because I found out that they're all Nazis. Okay, well, the descendants of Nazis, that NASA was started by Nazis, and our government, who has jeopardized the whole nation and the whole Western world, maybe the whole globe, well, not the globe, but well, the whole world, because of the greed for the technology that's coming from the aliens. I believe that they have agenda, an agenda, and now, even if this was, uh, for me, if this was, well, I don't want to put a date on it, it was before this global warming scam started. Uh, uh, let me say, it's, it's easier. What was I going to say? I don't know how that came out. I'm not just doing it. Uh, I, I just had no reason to believe that, that they would be lying to us. See, but now I see a reason that they're lying to us. It was almost, I don't want to say anything, but a lot that comes forth from the scientific community comes forth to, to support this um, global warming, this climate change theory, which is a scam, okay? Man has never had any uh, ability to affect climate change. Things change, the, the na nature changes, but man doesn't affect that. Yes, there have been changes, but we haven't been affecting it, okay? So since my mind was broken free that, that whatever I hear on that TV about, so, now I, with politics, I don't believe what they tell me, now I don't believe what they tell me about science without thinking about it and investigating it and asking the Lord about it. All of us, have, do we not believe everything they teach you in school? Do they not believe the, t the history that they teach you? They're, changed, they're rewriting the history books. The whole history of World War II in the, in the history books that we teach our kids is, is a lie. Because the Rockefellers paid off the, the book publishers. You can't believe anything. You listen to it, you put it in your mind, and you ask the Lord. Now, you may not get a direct answer from God, 
but you have to, you have to have a relationship with him. You listen to it, you ask him about it, and you hopefully, hopefully, what you perceive in your heart is the truth. You, I don't, I don't get a direct answer from God. It's my spirit that directs me to the truth. So, so now my mind's delivered uh, fr from the from the scientists delivered in that. Um, well, I don't. I really. I, I put it before God, but I don't believe anything that they tell us. They run. They these all the all of the holes of power are run by these aliens. If that's not even the right word. I call them aliens, and they're all manipulating human beings. Do you know what the latest thing is? Look at where all this. First of all, after all these years, it's gelled. Well, you would say since 1942, okay, since we brought these animals over here and gave them amnesty. Okay, what, is, what has all these lies been about? The first sign that I can see is global warming. What are they doing with global warming? They're using it to tax Americans to the gazoo. They're destroying the middle class and giving the money to people that don't work. Okay, but, but that's not even the issue. They're stealing our money. They have no right to our money. So, and then they're distributing it. They believe in the distribution of wealth, which is a communist principle. <clears throat> okay. So that was all that I thought about global warming. That now, now here's a major principle, and I thank Rush Limbaugh for this, because this is one of his main themes. Science, brethren, is not, and it's not exact. Everything the scientists do is theory. They investigate, they look, they use machines, they form what they call a model. This scientist thinks this is accurate, that scientist thinks that is accurate. It's all theories. See, they can't prove global warming. It's a theory. Maybe it's based on a computer. It's a theory. And there are scientists that say it's false. But we have politicians that stand up and talk as if it's an absolute fact. But there are scientists that don't agree with it. That's mind control to tell people that something is an absolute fact. When there are legitimately qualified people that disagree with the theory. That's evil. That's mind control and mind manipulation. You see. So I'm still thinking, well, you know, it's all coming through the UN and the God of the UN is Lucifer. If you don't know that, you should know it. The God of the UN is Lucifer. It's very anti Christian. So I'm thinking, well, that's, that's what the issue is with climate change. They, they are communist at their root, and they just want to, uh, to destroy, the, they want to destroy the, the American way of life. You know? Well, what do you think the latest thing that's coming out is? Mm -hmm. Well, just in case you don't understand this climate change thing, it says that there's too much carbon dioxide in the air. Now, for your information, the trees breathe in the carbon dioxide and give off oxygen, which is what we need. But this is the whole thing behind it, the whole mentality behind it, that there's too much uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So who do you think is the primary cause, what group is the primary cause of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Who do you think? Who do you think? Who's really responsible for this? They'll just knock down all the trees. No, no, yeah, humans, so humans, humans. They now want to genetically modify us that we shouldn't breathe out that much carbon dioxide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> what about the cows? <laughs> and the cows, of course, the cows too. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's, a, it's so insane that you laugh at it, but it's okay to laugh at it if you know that there's a mental, an, an intelligence behind it that is dead serious. And one, one of the issues that really has opened me up is this knowledge. I now know that the beings that promote whatever the agenda is that's designed to destroy uh, humanity, because that's what it is, it's they hate us, it's designed to destroy humanity, that the, every, their whole agenda is out there hidden in plain sight. They tell you about it, and it's so ridiculous that people, people laugh, you just laugh. Everything they're doing is out there, which has given me a new interest in movies these days. Everything they're doing is out there, and it's so ridiculous that you think it's a joke. But it's not a joke. It's, a, it's, a, it's an insane mind. 
It's hard to believe that that anyone could conceive it. They're not human. Brethren, they're not human. They're not human. And they hate humanity. And anyone listening to this now would call me a conspiracy theorist. They tell you that it's not true. Now listen, I want to tell you what happened. The latest thing coming out from from the, the from, I think it comes out from NASA, no, it's from the scientific community, is they now discovered signs of free flowing water on Mars. Signs of now, I don't even believe that. I don't even know if these telescopes. I don't believe anything. The Lord hasn't commented on it, and even Rush Limbaugh was saying, "Well, there are there's ice on Mars," because he's believing some of the stuff. I don't even know that that's true. See? I'm not saying it's not true. It's just up there on my shelf. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. That we can actually see Mars and that there are ice caps on Mars. I don't care. What do I God God's creation God's work of creation is here in the earth. But I like truth that God wants to tell me, but I'm walking around saying, I don't even know if we can see on Mars. This is a liberated mind, brethren. I'm encouraging you to liberate your mind. You don't have to believe what I believe, but have your mind liberated and make sure that it's not your pride or your ego that's making you believe something or that, is, or that is stopping you from being open about it. Because we have had that issue in the ministry. Someone who, whatever, for whatever reason, their pride was operating and they were not, they were not having an, an open attitude towards this. And what they said to me made no sense. So we talked about it. I hope they're okay now. So, on, uh, I hear this, you know, that this was free-flowing, signs of free-flowing water on Mars. And my first reaction was, I don't believe anything they tell me, you know. I really just, but it's not important to me. Well, I turn on Rush Limbaugh, and I actually heard somebody saying the same thing. He's pretty much saying, I don't believe anything they tell me. And I realize now that he's been doing this all along, but it never affected me. He's, I've been listening to him for years say, well, the global warming is false. And so it, how, how do I explain what I'm trying to say? Russia's been saying for years and others have been saying for years that global warming is false. Yet it never registered in my mind. See, how am I going to express this? I've known this for years that there's two camps of scientists that there was funny business that the, there was a whole bunch of emails that were discovered by the scientists that are pro-global warming, saying that they did it for, for ill-begotten gain because they want the, gov the federal government grants or whatever. It was really proven that it's false, that it, it's conjured up. I'm hearing all of this, and yet the programming of my mind was not broken. As I was listening to the two sides of it, and I, I chose to trust Rush, I don't know how to explain it, I, I, but still, it never occurred to me. It didn't register. Everything that I was hearing, it didn't register that there are scientists today that are lying to the people for ill-begotten gains. That it never got through to me that I don't need Rush. Whatever I hear coming from that community, I need to know that there's a good chance it's a lie. See, I hope I just explained that. You know, it, it didn't, maybe there was a crack, but it didn't break. See. Now I, I did it for myself when I heard that they found signs of free-flowing water on Mars. I did it for myself. I don't believe anything these people tell me. See? Then I turn on Rush, and he's saying the same thing, and he, he goes even further. He says, he says uh, how do they know? This is how we explain it these days. How do they know? Do they go to Mars? Are they there? Do they see it for themselves? They're saying that it happened so many years ago, I don't know how many years ago, a million years ago, that there was free-flowing water on Mars. How did they know? They examined this, they examined that, they put it in a computer, and they developed a theory. A theory. They don't know. So Rush has been fighting against this for years. I've been listening to Rush, but it didn't, it didn't, the walnut didn't crack until just now. And then he said, I'll bet you, Russia, I'll bet you anything they're going to use this to promote global warming. That's what Rush said. And within a couple of days, sure enough, 
Yes, the reason that there's no, there was free-flowing water, but there's no longer any free-flowing water is that there was a major catastrophic event, and it most likely came from global warming. That's what the scientists are saying now. So they have an agenda. It's, it's easier to believe that they're lying when you comprehend that they have an agenda. So now that's their agenda, global warming. And, and global warming is a big hoax. They want to genetically manipulate people that we should grow, we should be smaller and eat less food. They want us to be smaller so that we will eat less food. They want to genetically manipulate our eyes so that we can see at night, so that we don't have to use energy at night. They're playing with our bodies, brother. They're crazy. And what Rush was saying was what, what was concerning him is that these millennials, these young people just coming out of college, they just think it's wonderful. They're completely, their minds are completely gone. They think it's wonderful. So we need to start breaking the mind control. Okay. You need to be able to, you need to become a free thinker. No matter what anybody tells you, you need to, to know that it may not be true. It may be true. It may not be true. You know, what you see with your eyes may be true. It may not be true. Everything's an illusion. Jesus is the only reality. Christ is the only reality. And as long as we're like this with him, we're going to be okay. We need to understand the degree to which we believe what we hear from the world around us, which is, has become very evil, brethren, it's become very evil. But when you, when you hear something about somebody else, don't believe it, ask God. I haven't been watching Glenn Beck very much lately, but I turned to him on the other day, and he's, he's, he's either he's changed, or his evil is just being revealed in his attitude towards um, Donald Trump. I'll, I will never trust the man again. I will never trust Glenn Beck again. He's absolutely evil towards Glenn Beck, uh, towards uh, Donald Trump. Whether or not Donald Trump is God's man, whether or not Donald Trump is a good candidate is not the issue. He's absolutely evil towards him. And I see Glenn Beck using my control techniques, of many of which I learned from Glenn Beck. So has he always been like this and it just wasn't showing? Has he been taken over? Was he kind of, I don't know. I don't know. But he's proposing his own debate. You know, he has a whole network now, including the news media, and he's, what he's done is, I want to tell you, brethren, you cannot do what Glenn Beck has done without spiritual power. So either the Lord raised him up or Lucifer raised him up. In a few short years, this man has it. Radio shows, TV shows, a, a legitimate news network that he can get representatives into the White House. Charitable organizations. And what did he do it in 10 years? You don't do that without spiritual power, brethren. And he's on his show, naming Jesus. Never says a word about his Mormon teachings. He was up there the other day saying, they tell me, um, uh, some people, some Christians reject me because I'm a Mormon, when the only difference is in our doctrine. What's wrong with that statement? What's wrong with that statement? The only difference between Mormons and Christians are their doctrine. What's wrong with that statement? There's a lot more than just one thing. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong? What, be, be, beyond doctrine, what's the difference? So the only difference between me and someone who's a born-again Christian is our doctrine. What's wrong with that statement? They don't provide the Bible. What? They don't provide the Bible. Because no. he, he claims the Bible. No. But they don't go by it. No. We need a simple answer to that. What's the difference? Well, that's what he's saying there, that the only difference between a Christian and me is doctrine. And we're all Christians. We all believe in Christ. He's divining a Christian as someone who believes in Christ. He says, the only difference between me and boarding and Christians are doctrine. And you shouldn't be doing that to me. So what's wrong with that statement? He, he does. It's, it's, it's not it's, the same Christ. It's not the living God. The yeah, you're close. You're close. It's not the same what? 
same man child or the, or the, the the same what? The same spirit. The same spirit. It's not the same spirit. It's not the same spirit. What makes you a Christian is the spirit upon you. So he says, I have the same spirit as you do, and you reject me because of my doctrine. But the doctrine that you believe is not the doctrine. That doctrine was not written by the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit that wrote your doctrine is not the same spirit that I have. So that right there was a lie. That you might say, well, he doesn't know that. Let me tell you something about Glenn Beck. He's a very smart man. He's a very smart man, and he's very educated. He reads and reads. I don't know. I don't, I'm not talking about college. I don't even know if he went to college. He reads and reads and reads. He's a very smart, educated man, and don't tell me that he doesn't know that there's a difference in the spirit. Don't tell me that because I don't believe it. See, I've broken the mind control off of my mind. I don't believe that. And I also know that you can't tell the difference between the Holy Spirit and the false Holy Spirit when the false Holy Spirit is looking like the true Holy Spirit. The Bible tells you that. Satan comes in like an angel of light. So he's up there crying. He's up there crying and preaching and saying all the good things. And I want to tell you, there's no way to test that spirit except by the words that come out of his mouth. There's no way to test that spirit. Only Jesus can tell you it's a false spirit. And he never told me that. I have to listen to what the man's saying, and I've been listening to him for years. I've been listening to him for years to not hear one wrong word out of his mouth, and now all of a sudden he's being exposed to me, and to whoever has eyes to see, and he is to hear. That is a lie. Now you could say, well, what again Christians uh, say I'm not a Christian because of, of my doctrine, and, and I understand that... Um, that doctrine is written by a spirit, but I still think it's the same spirit. I maintain it's the same spirit. He won't even touch doctrine. All of his doctrine is Christian. Isn't that being a phony? That you're a Mormon and the only thing you have to talk about is Jesus? When we know that there's much more to the Mormon church than Jesus, all you talk about is the New Testament. Are you not making yourself something that you're not? Why is it okay to be on your programming and talk about Jesus and preach the Bible and not talk about your Mormonism? Are you not making yourself something that you're not to the people that are listening to you? Yes, you are. That makes you a liar and a phony. Now, if you didn't preach, if you didn't talk about Jesus, but, I, but, you, but we all know that you're Mormon, okay. But you're preaching, you're preaching. You're on TV preaching like you're a Christian, like you're a born-again Christian. You're not a born-again Christian. You're a Mormon. And you're not acting like Mormons act. And you're not talking like Mormons talk. You're tell everybody, telling everybody that you're a Mormon and you're acting and talking like a born-again Christian. That makes you a liar. That makes you a liar, Mr. Beck and a phony, and you have an agenda. And it took me much too long to figure out. So he was up there the other day. He wants his news media to, to host a Republican debate without, with the six top runners except Donald Trump. He wants to leave Donald Trump out. And then to justify it, he said, all of those, that 25% that Donald Trump has out there, they're, they're what do you say, justify, the, I can't remember the right name, just something about Wall Street, justify, well, not justify, something about Wall Street, that Wall Street organization, they're this kind of people, and they're that kind of people, and they're that kind of people, but they're not my people. He said, my polls, for my, for my network, he's, Trump is number 10 on our polls. I don't believe him. Because that was an evil spirit coming out of his mouth. You see, for years I'm reading the New Testament, reading the book of Revelation, 
and it talks about the false prophet, and there were evil spirits coming out of his mouth like frogs. Doesn't it, doesn't it say something like that? Evil spirits like frogs coming out of his mouth. And I want to tell you that until I, that what I'm telling you right now, this is new. Okay, I didn't even have this in my head. This this is just coming to me now. I never visualized how an evil spirit would come out of somebody's mouth that was like a frog. And I just saw it on the Glenn Beck channel the other night. I saw an evil spirit come out of his mouth like a, like a frog. I saw evil on that man. I saw the kind of mind control and manipulation that he has been exposing for years. Doing the same thing. I want to tell you something, brethren. That is scripture. You judge somebody when you do the same thing, God has promised to expose you. See, you're not supposed to be judging anybody by your own spirit. Only the spirit of Christ in you can judge people. And I want to tell you right now that the spirit of Christ in you is not going to reveal the sin in somebody that you too have only reveal sin that you have already overcome because we all are guilty of all sins in areas where you have overcome the Lord Christ will rise up in you and reveal that sin if it, if it fulfills God's purposes but if you judge people if you do what Glenn Beck has done and expose all this wickedness in the government and everywhere else for all these years when you yourself are wicked the day will come that God will expose that you have the same thing that's what the Bible says so all you, I think it was in the book of Galatians, all you out there judging people when you do the same thing yourself? Well, I was mind controlled by Glenn Beck for all of these years. He's out there preaching Jesus, preaching Bible, preaching gospel, crying, looking as sincere as he could possibly be, and it took all this time for me to figure out that that's not how Mormons act. That's how born-again Christians act. So why isn't your behavior lining up with what you are? It makes you a liar. I didn't expect you to do that this morning, brother. The Lord's really after Glenn Beck. So, brother, we have to get the mind control. We need to start thinking. Do not just swallow things whole. You're not supposed to swallow whole what I tell you. I've been telling you this for years. You're supposed to take it home, talk to your husband at home, and say, Lord, I either I'm comfortable with what she preached today, or I'm not comfortable with what Sheila preached today. But I'm in her ministry, so I'm supposed to be I'm believing that you gave it to her. So if I'm comfortable with it, please confirm it. Give me the second witness. If I'm not comfortable with it, Please help me to be please help me to be in sync with my pastor. And when you pray that prayer, either he will teach you or help you or he will correct me. You need to understand that. And if I make a mistake, you praying a prayer like that will get me corrected. Please pray that prayer. I don't want to preach an error. Now don't pray against me. You have to do it the way I told you to do it. That you submit to what I'm telling you, and you're confessing to God that you have questions about it. But you're going to accept it. You're going to accept it by faith because I'm the teacher. Lord, help me to understand it. And then if, if, it's, if I'm wrong, he's going to fix it. I hope you want. Do you understand that? Definitely. How you're supposed to pray. You're not supposed to be coming against me because maybe you're wrong. So, um, I did want to have a, a political discussion with you. I think we should start another file um, for that. Let's, let's talk about what's going on in the world today.